Instead of suffering through the YouTube chat, click like and subscribe. You know the best part of this show was? What's that? No one knows just immediately. Oh, the show we watched? Yes. The main event? Yes. No, even better than that. Er Ernie Ladd. Fucking Ernie Ladd. Ernie Ladd was awfully great. Jesus, God almighty. They had Ernie Ladd. So it's, uh, what's that other geek's name? Boys? Boyd Pierce. Boyd Pierce. Boyd Pierce is there. And the show opens and he just starts talking. And Ernie Ladd is sitting next to him. And he kind of starts talking or whatever, this Boyd Pierce. And there's nothing all that exciting about it. He's running down the card. You got this dream match coming up. Yeah, it's just very nasally and boring. Yeah. And then, uh, and then he introduces our special guest commentator today, Ernie Ladd. And I was like, Ernie Ladd, huh? Doing commentary. All right, well, whatever. I've heard lots of wrestlers do commentary. So the first match starts, and, you know, Boyd's, like, doing some of the talking. And then he says something like, Ernie, you're the special guest commentator today, so why don't you uh, give us some commentary? And that was all Ernie needed. He fucking took over the show. And this guy was a fucking great, like, Flat out great commentator. He'd be maybe the best commentator in wrestling today. He was so great. And fuck, I was just watching. I watched this in two parts. I watched the first 20 minutes. Did a workout. Watched the second 20 minutes. And like the first 20 minutes, I'm like, God damn, this Ernie Ladd's fucking great. And that's all I could think about was how great Ernie Ladd was. Then I watched the second half. And in the second half, as we're going to get to, there's a fucking Ted DiBiase match. Against um, Paul Orndorff. Paul Orndorff. And, you know, they're having this this match, and they keep talking about the figure four. Ted DiBiase's figure four. Paul Orndorff says he can break the figure four. And Ernie Ladd's like, man, if any man can break that figure four, that's the beginning of the end of this title reign for Ted DiBiase. So they fucking put on the figure four, and Paul Orndorff reverses it. And Ted DiBiase, it's the reverse figure four. But, like, DBS, he's so stupid, he just doesn't release the hold. He just suffers. Fucking Ernie Ladd calling the action here. Like, I actually got off the treadmill. <laughs> I was like, I was so into this, I couldn't watch it and walk at the same fucking time. I got off the treadmill. I watched it. I rewound it and watched it again. I was like, I swear to God, I swear to God, in 2024, the best call I have heard in all of wrestling this year is Ernie Ladd talking about the reversed figure four in this fucking Paul Orndorff and Ted DiBiase match. He was great. So I'm not sure I want to watch anything else. If this guy's going to be the commentator, I want to watch more. He was the star of the show. Fuck. What a commentator. Paul fucking Orndorff versus Ted goddamn DiBiase. It's a great match. Holy shit, this match. The lockup alone is better than you'll see in some two-hour shows these days. And you mentioned the Colonel. Teddy Biasi is also just a very, very big dude. And I, I remember, you know, years after this, obviously, he's a summer slam against the Road Warriors. And he didn't have their pecs, or their biceps, or their triceps, or all that. But, like, just the height and the width of his frame, I think, is actually bigger than they are. He's a big, big man. And Ordorff's obviously a huge, jacked up guy. And these dudes are moving. Yeah, but this is very much like that match with uh, the Colonel. Like, DiBiase is just a large human. Mm -hmm. Orndorff is like a bodybuilder, a regular sized human who's all jacked up. Yeah, and there's a there's a big difference in like just the bodies. It's like if you look at him in a vacuum, you'd be like, man, Orndorff is like it's a giant guy. But you see him next to each other, and it's like DiBiase is a much larger human yeah. than Paul Orndorff. Yes. So. Just, it's very basic stuff like arm ringers and back elbows and tackles, but every single motion they take is designed to hurt the opponent and win the match. It's super intense all the way through. It's quite great. And order gets the heat for like five seconds, and then we get Ted DiBiase cutting him off, running wild, and hooking that figure four. Before you get to this, before you get to the figure four, I'm there's actually one moment that I like before this, and it's when. Orndorff is down, and Ted, Ted DiBiase has his arm behind his back, and he's dropping his he's dropping his knee on it over and over again, dropping it on his uh, on his right on his left arm. And then a few seconds later, Orndorff has Ted DiBiase in the corner, and Orndorff is now hitting him with his right arm, like giving him elbows to the chest. But while he's doing that, 
he'd elbow once and then shake with the other arm. Oh, and yeah. Once, shake with the other arm. Yeah, yeah. Get, you're trying to get that feeling back in his left arm because of the knees that were just dropped moments ago. And it, on top of what happens later with the um, figure four, this match was utterly believable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So... Sean, do you want to talk about the figure four? Because you actually were, you were marking out for this figure four before I even saw it. Yeah. So my favorite thing about this figure four is we've always been uh, we've always learned over the course of however however long we've watched wrestling that when you turn this thing over, you know it's supposed to hurt. But we've we always always thought in the back of our head that well, how does it hurt? Because you're still in the same position as the figure four. Like I don't really understand how that how that works. But in this match. Ted DiBiase is selling like crazy once it gets turned over. And then there's a moment where Orndorff, he comes up on his front arms and he kind of leans over to the side and you can start seeing the torque in Ted, Ted DiBiase's leg. Yeah. And at that point, and you got Ernie Ladd yelling about it. At that point, I'm like, oh my God, that's how it hurts. <laughs> <laughs> the light bulb went off. This is how this figure four actually hurts when you turn it over. It looked like a calf slicer like AJ Styles uses. Well, I can tell you from doing mini figure fours that the actual reason it hurts is because when you do a figure four and it gets turned over, the straight leg is right in your balls. <laughs> so it fucking hurts your dick. I don't want that. So then you got to let go of the thing. Well, no wonder Teddy was in such pain here. But that's what's so weird about it. It's like in real life, you can put on a figure four. And if someone turns it over and their shin is digging into your ding dong, you just release the hold. Right. But Ted hadn't figured that out yet. Nobody had taught him that no. escape. Oh, he's still young. Also, the, uh, the, the ring mat was so loose that he's grabbing it like a rug. Yeah. Like he's pulling it up and screaming and tearing into the rug. Phenomenal. Just I should great. mention a story that I've mentioned before, but I just want to continue mentioning it for the rest of my life so it's never forgotten. I was once watching some short, some video, and it was Anderson Silva at a uh, at a seminar. He's teaching some jujitsu or whatever. And uh and he he put some kind of figure four. Yes. Because he showed there's this thing called a De La Hiva guard. And the way that you, and the person who's on the ground, it's a, the De La Hiva guard, you're on the ground, you're trying to sweep someone standing. So you put on this De La Hiva guard. And this guy put the De La Hiva guard, and so Anderson Silva turned it into a figure four leg lock. It's like, God damn, how about that? So I swear, I swear to God, I went to class that night. And fucking Wang was there. And Wang had never in his life, ever, done a daily Hiva guard. Ever. I'm fucking rolling with Wang. And this son of a bitch put me, he tried a daily Hiva guard. And I fucking figure forward him and submitted him. <laughs> the same fucking day. One of the great moments in my life. A figure four leg lock actually works. It is a legitimate submission if you can actually get it on some dumb shit. That fucking tries a movie doesn't know in class. So anyway, that's the figure four story. None of that was exciting as the actual figure four in this yeah, match yes. with Ernie Ladd on commentary. Yeah, Ernie, that was an all-timer. Ernie Ladd screaming, he's about to pass out. Why don't he give up? And there's one minute left, and it's fighting, fighting. He can't escape, but he won't quit. And the time expires, and it's a draw. That match was incredible. It was awesome. Incredible match. Absolutely great. I thought this show ruled. And they rushed off the air even though there was like three minutes left. I guess we just got a three-minute video package at the end and watch it. But uh, you know what I got to say here before we go? I hereby induct Ernie Ladd <laughs> into the Hall of Awesome. Because you know what? He was fucking awesome on this show. He was definitely show. awesome, yes. All in favor, say aye. 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 This, might be the, this might be the farthest back we've gone to put someone in the Hall of Awesome. Ernie Ladd in the Hall of Awesome. Congratulations to Ernie's friends and family. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.